الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده. Of the characteristics of the believer is that the believer covers up his own faults and sins in front of the eyes of others, and he also covers up the sins of his brother and does not expose them. The believer is not a gossip monger. The believer does not create drama. The believer does not like public scandals. The believer is somebody who wants to cover up all types of sins and evil that are of a personal and of a private nature. And this concept in Arabic is called sitir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةِ Those who love to publicize lewd things or scandals, those who love to publicize these things have a severe punishment waiting for them on the day of judgment. Allah says in the Quran, لَا يُحِبُّ اللَّهُ الْجَهْرَ بِالسُّوءِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ إِلَّا مَنْ ظُلِمْ Allah does not love to publicize evil talk except for the one who has been wronged. We're going to come to the exceptions. There are exceptions. But the general rule, evil talk, fahisha, ludity, any type of scandal, we do not publicize it if it is a private matter between a person or between two people. And this is manifested so many times in the seerah, most prominently in the famous incident of ifq or slander of Aisha. When people began spreading rumors and began spreading the slander, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized on multiple levels and of the things he criticized, why are you spreading these tales in the first place? When tongues began to pass it around to each other and you said that which you did not know and in this context Allah said those who want to spread scandals publicly they have a severe punishment waiting for them. Allah loves to conceal one's sins. Allah does not love to publicize sins. And that is why of the names of Allah is a sitir. And the meaning of a sitir, the one who covers up, the one who conceals. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah sitirun yuhibbu sitir. Allah is the coverer and he loves covering up. And this is shown in a number of incidents in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once a man came into to the masjid and he said O Messenger of Allah, I have done such and such. And he said what he had done with a lady. So uh, pr make the had do the punishment upon me. Umar ibn Khattab said to him, Woe to you. Allah covered you with his covering. Why did you have to break that covering and come to us? And the Prophet was silent, which means he approved of what Umar said. Umar is saying, woe to you, this was a private matter. Why did you have to come and say it publicly? You would have kept it hidden and not said to other people. And in the famous incident of Ma'iz, Ma'iz committed zina. It's one of the famous incidents in the seerah. Ma'iz went to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and he said that I have done zina. What do I do? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Allah Azza wa Jal, satarak Allah. Allah has covered you up, so leave the satar of Allah and go back. Khalas, I didn't hear anything. Go back to your house. But Ma'iz felt guilty. He went to another friend of his by the name of Hazal. Hazal said, oh my God, astaghfirullah. He took him to the Prophet Sallallahu He said, listen to what my friend has to say. So when Ma'iz said to his, his story, the first thing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, instead of speaking to Ma'iz, he turned to Hazal. And he said, ya Hazal, why didn't you cover him with your cloak when he came to you? That would have been better. In other words, instead of getting involved with Ma'iz and the sin of Ma'iz, which eventually he did, the first thing he wanted to set the lesson, and that lesson was, why publicize? It's something private. Keep it private. Our Prophet wasallam said that whoever covers up the faults of his brother, Allah will cover his faults up on the day of judgment. This hadith is in Tirmidhi. Whoever covers up the faults of his brother. Man satara, this is covering up the uyub, the faults of the brother. Allah will cover up his faults on the day of judgment. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned the hypocrites. The hypocrites were the ones causing the fitna, spreading the rumors, creating the drama. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said authentic hadith, O people who have accepted Islam with their tongues, but their heart is not still upon Iman. Ya ma'ashara man amana bi lisanihi. O people whose tongues have said you're Muslim, but your hearts are not yet Muslims. I am warning you from backbiting and from uncovering the private mistakes of the believers. Tatabba'urat al mu'mineen. Don't go and find the faults of others because this is a hadith. 
Whoever makes it a point to uncover other people's faults, Allah will uncover his faults and Allah will humiliate him even if he's in the privacy of his house. This hadith is in Musnad Imam Ahmad. It's a powerful hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam firstly linked creating drama with the hypocrites. He's speaking to the hypocrites. Oh hypocrites, all you're doing is you're bad mouthing the believers. All you're doing, you're finding fault and criticizing. All you're doing is you're scavenger hunting, trying to uncover a mistake of so-and-so, a fault of so-and-so, and publicize it. Then he said, if you're going to do that, then realize Allah will do it to you. And if Allah does it to you, then no one will protect you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this notion of covering up the faults of our brother, obviously it's a very deep topic, and it also goes against many aspects of our modern culture. Astaghfirullah, but our modern culture, it revels in gossips. There are so many publications, news channels, you know, on the internet. There's in fact entire satellite stations. They're meant for gossip. The latest scandal, what celebrity did what with another celebrity and what astaghfirullah fahish are going on. They love to mention these tidbits and unfortunately it has affected our Muslim culture as well. Dear brothers and sisters, our faith teaches us to cover up the faults, the personal private faults of other people. In the course of our lifetimes, every one of us will come across a sin that our brother, our cousin, our friend is doing. And now that sin, you didn't expect to find this, but you did for whatever reason. The Sharia says, listen to me carefully, if that sin is a private personal matter, that's not predatory, it's not vulm on other people, the default is you give nasiha directly, you go to him or her directly, you tell that person, ya khi, please do tawbah, let's all come and we'll help you overcome this, whatever it might be, and you give him advice. It is not allowed to go tell any other person. It is not allowed to publicize and to create a drama and a scandal. Now there are exceptions. Of the exceptions is when people are doing vulm to other people. When there's injustice, this is not a personal sin now. When somebody is stealing money and making it a habit to steal money. When somebody is a predator preying on innocent people, then yes, we do not cover up the faults of any predator. However, a personal private sin that is between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you come across it, then the default is you help your brother to overcome that sin and you do not expose to other people. And this is in contrast to the culture we find ourselves in. As we said, there are exceptions. Of the exception, if you are the one upon whom zulm has been done, if somebody has done injustice to you, you are the, the party that uh, uh, zulm has been done, you have the right to publicize, yes. Now, what are some of the problems that happen when we get involved in the drama culture? What are some of the issues when we spread the sins of other people? Multiple things. First and foremost, the person, the person himself, the sinner, you make his tawbah difficult. Because now all of society considers this person to be a pariah, an evil person. Whereas the fact of the matter is every one of us is a sinner. And it is only Allah's rahmah that has covered our sins. Sufyan ibn Uyayna said, the great scholar of hadith, were it not for the sitter of Allah, were it not for the covering of Allah, no one amongst us could sit with another except in shame. It is Allah's mercy that your sins are private. It is Allah's mercy that your sins are private. If Allah has tested you by seeing the sins of somebody else, why will you help shaitan against him and publicize the sin and make the situation worse? No, so you make it difficult for that person. Number two, you make your own ego big because when you speak bad about other people, what happens to yourself? You feel your ego becoming bigger. The purpose of slander and gossip, generally speaking, is that you feel better and we know the sin of arrogance is bigger than any private sin the person might be doing. Number three, when you spread sins publicly, when you talk about these things publicly, what happens is you normalize indecency. You trivialize sin. Subhanallah, we don't want to do that. We want sin to be something we don't like. We're disgusted at. Now, if we keep on saying, so-and-so is drinking, so-and-so is drinking, so when we find out 20% is drinking, astaghfirullah, I'm saying, then those that are not drinking, they're gonna say, you know what? If 20% are doing it, I'll add myself. No, we don't want to normalize sin. That's why Allah says, "Inna ladinu hibun and tashi al fahisha, fahisha, indecency, haram things should be kept 
hidden, not publicized. And again, please don't misquote me. We're in this Me Too movement and scandals and whatnot. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, people preying on children. I'm not talking about zulm. I'm talking about personal, private sins. To be very explicit, if somebody is in doing injustice, then no, there is no protection. If somebody's preying on children or innocent people, there is no protection. But we're talking about a private person. And by the way, let me be very clear here. It doesn't matter if that person is a community leader or a hafiz or a sheikh. A private sin is a private sin. We don't expose the private sins of our brothers. We go to that person directly and we advise them directly. So, number one, it is a door that closes tawbah for that person. Number two, you feel arrogant and better. Number three, you normalize the sin. And number four, you create a toxic culture which we are seeing right now. You create this cancel culture. One mistake and khalas, you're out the door. La hawla wa billah. This entire cancel culture, it is un-Islamic to be honest. One mistake. Who amongst us has not committed a mistake? Who amongst us has not slipped and done a sin? This is not the sharia. Imagine if on the day of judgment, Allah held you accountable your whole life because of one incident or one slip up that you did. No, we thank Allah that Allah does not do the cancel culture. So then why are we doing this? The default brothers and sisters, we cover the faults of our believing brothers and sisters and we do not publicize them unless there is a greater good and the greater good will only be when this individual is publicly harming other people. Then, yes, we may publicize by going to the authorities. Otherwise, the sitr is of the characteristics of the believer. I conclude with this hadith that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call one of his servants and Allah will envelope him with his special envelope and Allah will list did you do this sin did you do this sin and the believer will say yes I did yes I did yes I did until the believer thinks he has been destroyed by the long list of sins then Allah will say I was the one who covered these sins from the eyes of other people. I covered your sins from the eyes of others just like I covered them in this dunya I will cover them up on the day of judgment. Because he was pious, because his sins were private, because he did tawbah, he covered up his sins, he did tawbah private to you, Allah. Allah said, because you were private in your sins and I didn't expose your sins in this world, I'm not gonna expose them in the akhirah. Cover up your sins, have some haya and dignity. We are all sinful, turn to Allah in tawbah. Don't expose your own sins, don't expose the sins of other people. And if you do so, Allah Azza wa Jal will conceal your sins in this world and in the akhirah. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.